Paulo Coelho says, every one of us, when we are young, have a dream, and we need to learn to follow our dream. That's our mission in life. Many of us are told not to follow our dreams because we need to become real. And if we do that, if we don't follow what it is that our heart says we should do, we could make a lot of money, but we are not fulfilling our life mission. So when I was seven, eight years old, seven or eight, I can't remember exact, I remember I would be talking in parties with my relatives. And I would ask them, how come you're happy just to be socializing with each other? They say, what, why not? What should we do? I say, well, why don't you go and change the world? And they are looking at me and saying, this can't be our relative, you know, what the hell are you going to do? I left Iran when I was 17, and I thought I had a role to play. My dream was in creating world peace. And I have stayed with that, and I followed that. And each time it has gotten bigger and bigger. So let me tell you about my newest dream, and I believe all my life, whatever I did, is nothing compared to what I have got to do in here. The name of the project is Bet Amina. Amina is Asia, Middle East, North Africa, but also in Arabic, Farsi, and Turkish, it means integrity and honesty, and Bit is Bit. The new vision, the dream, is to create innovation ecosystems that create 10 million innovation jobs. I'm not doing this alone, obviously. I have a lot of partners. The key big ones are UC Berkeley, Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, 500 Startups, and Unreasonable Institute. Quick background on me. You can go and check my website, CameronElahian.com, get all of that. Many people always ask me, what do you do? I really have a tough time telling them because 25 years of my life first, I was an entrepreneur. 17 years, I was a venture capitalist, did global investments in six countries, US, Japan, China, India, Israel, Singapore. For the last 20 years, we have been doing a global philanthropy in more than 36 countries. And the last couple years, I've been working as an innovation catalyst. One of the things that I have learned, if you want to do a big project, is always look at mega trends. One big mega trend is that the price of oil is falling. This is caused, one of the reasons for it is alternative energy. This is Ray Kurzweil. If you don't know or are not familiar with him, I highly recommend go and read about him. He is father of a lot of artificial intelligence, robotics, and uh, one of the co-founders of Singularity University. He put this chart together that to create one kilowatt hour of electricity from solar, in the 70s, it was close to $80, and he predicted by 2014, it would be down to 36 cents. Well, he was wrong. November of 2014, the price was five and a half cents as wholesale in generation of electricity. And this was lower than coal, which was seven cents, and lower than oil and gas. So the positive good news is, Ray says within the next 20 years, by 2030, within the next 14 years, the price will go down to zero and all the capacity of, uh, needed for generation of electricity can be handled by solar. So the positive news is that we are going to save the planet. Another big factor is the conscious consumption. People are very careful about saving our planet. And as we are learning about the damages that uh, fossil-based energy creates, we are using alternatives. There are a number of countries that are affected by drop of price in oil. Here is the list of top 30 of them. And here is the list of the countries 
which are affected by drop of price in gas. If you combine the two of them, we are talking about 40 countries. Many of them are common. And if you remove the bonds in Latin America and the ones in Europe, like Norway, the rest of them are within Africa, Middle East, Central Asia, and South Asia. And what is interesting is it almost matches the map of Muslim majority countries. So why is that important? All of these countries have a huge population of young people. And if the youth don't have jobs, in an Islamic country, the father has to approve before a young man can marry a daughter. And if a man doesn't have a job, there is no wife. And in Islamic country, if you don't have a wife, you get no sex. It's not like America or Europe, boyfriend, girlfriends, whatever, can have sex outside marriage. So imagine a young man with no job, no wife, no sex, no hope. That's not fun. More than 50 organizations, which are big terrorist organizations, know this. And they are going and soliciting these young men to join them. We only hear about ISIS, but there is many of them. Nusra Front, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda in Iraq, Al-Qaeda in Nigeria, ISIS in Nigeria, Al-Shabaab, Jamaat Islamiyah, the list goes on and on and on. And what they offer is a job, training, respect. If the young man wants a wife, they provide a wife for him. If he only wants to have sex, they kidnap a young girl and provide it to them. And no wonder the spread of terrorism has been crazy all across here. The number of terrorist attacks, Q1 of 2015, last year, was 25 per month in that region. We only heard about one of them, which happened in France. Q1 of this year, 2016, the number grew to 125 per month, five times. And we only heard about a couple of them. The one in Brussels, and some news uh, media reported the ones in Turkey. A ticking bomb that is facing us. So that's the bad news. The good news is a lot of young people in these countries want to be high-tech entrepreneurs. And we have a lot of successful high-tech entrepreneurs coming from that region in US and Europe. The diaspora are very, very strong. So the trick is somehow using them, create a network and make something happen. Create jobs. The only way I know to create something out of nothing is innovation economy, innovation jobs. And it's the only way you don't need the blessing of the dictators which are running these countries or the billionaires which are typically old men controlling all the businesses in these countries. So the vision is how to create 10 million innovation jobs in 10 years. Well, to do that, you start with going after inspiring 50 million people hopefully get one out of 50 to say, maybe I should go and start a company. Usually, on average, you need two people to start a company, so it ends up in 500,000 companies. Many of them fail. Some of them receive funding, a few thousand dollars from friends, from some pre-accelerators, some relatives, angel investors. 300,000 of them plan to give them some serious money, bigger money, and one third of them finally end up to be successful. If they each create jobs for 100 people, you get your 10 million. Simple math. But how do we go about it? We have to follow three parallel tracks. iTech pruneurship, which is high-tech entrepreneurship with access to broadband internet. Investments 
in itechpreneurship, teaching people not to shy away from that investment, and social entrepreneurship, teach people that create companies that have positive impact. Don't create a gambling site. Don't go and do new innovation in tobacco, in oil, in gas, the things that destroy. There is a top-down approach, which is work with the governments, help them change their public policy, and help them change their laws. To create an innovation economy is quite complicated, but what we need to do is localize it based to the needs of each country. This is where I work right now with five governments, and I use the resources of Johns Hopkins and UC Berkeley School of Public Policy, of professors, that I can help me. We help them rewrite their laws for taxation, for securities, for uh, uh, incorporation, bankruptcies. Bottom line is, to go bottoms up, bottom up, you have to create some videos, some online courses, some webinars, help support pre-accelerators, and make serious investments in all of these. At UC Berkeley, we have created the Beta Mina Center. And our goal is to have these courses, videos, seminars, and instructors without borders so that we can send Berkeley certified instructors who are successful entrepreneurs or investors to these 32 countries for periods of one week to three weeks to teach high-tech entrepreneurship. On Reasonable Institute, we have one week courses that we have done this in 10 different countries so far and we plan to do it in all these 32 countries to teach about sustainable social entrepreneurship. We are establishing relationship with a number of local VCs, local incubators, accelerators in every one of these countries. And I have been involved mentoring and working with Dave McClure and Kristen Tsai at 500 Startups. And I'm committed to help them raise not only their next fund, which is 200 million, but the one after that, the one after that. My commitment to them is help them raise a billion dollars so that they could go and make investments. What they have done in five years, they have invested in 1,500 companies in 50 countries already with a very good return on investment. And I want to make sure this follows up and goes from 500 to 500,000. That's a pretty tall order but I believe it is doable if you bring the right kind of resources to that. And the best way I know to predict the future is to help create it. Thank you so much.